Yo, my people, welcome to Behind the Hits, hosted by Mixtape Madness with myself, Ebbs. Now, today, we're going to get to know Jester Beats, a producer who is confident in his ability to be versatile and who is behind the plugged in special involving Skengdo, AM, and much more, which has just hit 10 million views. He was also involved in RD and Jordan's Daily Duppy. And not to forget the impressive US placements with Poo Shasti, Stunner for Vegas, and Fabio Foran. Jester. Just like those out there, I want to get to know a bit about you. I do know a bit about you, but I do want to get to know a bit more. So mm. running back to the start for me, um, what was it like growing up, you know, just the beats? Run me through, like, the beginning. The full, the of, full, the full story. Yeah, the full rundown. Cool, um, cool. So for me, I've always been into music, like, just always. I was a DJ starting out. Like, okay. I got into DJing because I used to like Martin Garrick's music, like yeah, house yeah. music. So I was like, cool, Martin Garrick's DJ. I started doing parties and stuff, my mates' parties. Like, I wasn't getting paid, I was just doing it. Um, but yeah, and then started making my own stuff, 15, I'd say 15, 14. Had FO mobile, on my, so I was making beats on my mobile and stuff because it was easier than computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, house wasn't really working out. Like, the stuff, it was too complicated for me. Yeah, like, yeah. So I started making trap beats, started putting them on YouTube at 16. Um, it weren't going anywhere at all. Uh, I was getting 55 views, um, and like the the beats were terrible. And then, oh, I was, gonna, I was just about to say, were you proud of what you were making? Nah, at the nah, time? nah, bro. I just smacked anything up there. Like, oh, so, so I put when... Drake type beat. I put uh, like NLE Chopper type beat. Oh, I was okay, doing, I was yeah, doing yeah. everything. I had no like concept. I was yeah. putting out what I was making. I was putting it out there, and I was getting gas. I had like 10 subscribers, and I was refreshing <laughs> the view count. I think it was just me watching the same videos <laughs> over and over again, but. Yeah, and then kept going, YouTube didn't really take me that seriously. Then lockdown came about and I was like, cool. I'm either going to play Xbox the whole time or do something like creative. Yeah. So I was like, right, cool. I'm really going to sit down with music and take it seriously. So from there, I started sort of building um, drill sound as well, especially because that's the time I started listening to drill more, like six, seven and like them sort of gigs around them times. Yeah, yeah. And then I got into American music, 21 Savage, like Future, okay. Drake and stuff, Kendrick. And then... Yeah, still, I always loved house though. Like house, I don't know, just like, like the tempo, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. in the clubs, you know, you dancing, to, man, cutting the shapes. The yeah, sweat, cutting Saturday the shapes. Like, oh, it does nothing beats that, man. Exactly. That's kind of I find that kind of kind of nice that that was what it was like growing up because usually for most people, I mean, it's growing into I don't know, hitting peak of secondary school, getting into college, and then you get mm. either your uni days and getting into them times. But obviously, you've picked that up quite early. That's, that's yeah, nice I guess, I guess. I've sort in my whole life, I've sort of been like, I don't want to go the normal route of going mm. for a uni and stuff. Like, I was the original plan, but I was like, and I always want to do something different. Like, I always, I'm an only child, no brothers and sisters. I always wanted oh, to be okay. like something different, like, yeah, you know, yeah. just have my own thing going on and just, yeah, and it turned out to be music in the end. So, oh, okay. Talk me through um, your perspective on how sound was as you was growing up, um, just into when you started making beats. I think sound then was more like, everything was sort of experimental, like yeah. things were being done for the first time, like drill was sort of being born, even like real trap music was sort yeah. of still like being born then, like you had crazy producers like Wheezy coming up, bringing his whole new sounds in, like you had UK producers, like people like Ghost even like yeah. doing the whole new sort of drill, M1, like these guys are shaping the whole new, sort of sound but i feel drills drills definitely sped up i feel yeah. like the tempos get everything's about getting faster more jumpier um trap music i feel like nowadays from then i think it was a lot more synth based back then that was a more like travis scott sort of like kendrick drake it was a lot of more simps and stuff like just crazy just weird yeah. weirder stuff but um yeah nowadays i feel like it's it's just a bit um everything not everything's been done but i'd yeah. say like there's been a lot of that growth period and now we're sort of looking about and every new wave that happens, everyone jumps on it very quickly and the sound sort of gets rinsed out quite quickly. Has evolution, has it been a good thing the way it's evolved to the present day or? I mean, evolution's always good, like regardless, yeah. like it, it needs to happen, but I feel like it's it's been a, obviously music had a crazy journey over the past like five, 10 years, even obviously its whole, yeah. whole, whole lifetime. But I feel like very recently, the past year, since lockdown really, yeah. I feel like, people are very focused on trends and everyone jumps in the trend yeah, but yeah. it's not long lasting like music like that trend song that was a hit that was popping on tiktok like a yeah, year yeah. ago you don't listen to that now like yeah, that's not yeah. on that's not coming on you're like oh yeah, yeah turn yeah. this up again 
Whereas music five years ago, that's a banger. That's going to come on. Everyone's going to know it. Yeah, this song's still a hit. I'll still play this. But yeah. music nowadays, it's sort of just, let's make a quick, quick banger. Let's make the quick chart. Yeah. Let's make the quick bag. And like longer lasting, like timeless music is being, it's not being made as much as it used yeah. to be. When it comes to you and things being unique, aside from the fact that you like to be different in terms of sound, mm. how do you reflect that? Like, what's, what would you say is your trademark in your beats? Like, what represents Jester? So when I listen to yeah, Jester beat, that's people, do you know what I mean? Yeah, people, people would probably say how I arrange my beats because okay. I sort of chop them up, like, and create little drops all over the place. Yeah. It's, people say it's very unnecessary, which I think sometimes it is, but... Basically, when you're in a studio or when you part part of a song yeah, and the beat goes doof, 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 or it cuts out and it comes back in hard, yeah, that's yeah. the point everyone gets gassed. You know yeah, what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah. So I thought, right, cool. I'm trying to make people get gassed and hear my beats. So let's yeah, let's yeah. think about this. So I just did the drops myself instead of the engineer doing it. Yeah. So like, so now I'm in the studio and artist hearing the beat. Yeah, hard, hard. The beat cuts out. I'm like, where's the beat going? It goes doof, 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 comes back in. They're yeah. like, what? That was hard. Like, they okay. weren't expecting it, and they can write to certain parts of the beat. Yeah, so yeah. I'd say that how I arrange my beats. Um, I think that's the standout thing. You arrange it in that way. Does it necessarily start like that when you're creating with artists? Because is it, oh, you know, let me start with a melody, see if I get a reaction, then I go into perks. It I, I always start with a melody. Like in, in the studio session, whether I'm using a sample, yeah, like yeah. depends who I'm with. Like let's say I'm with an, like a sort of wave trap artist, like yeah, yeah. someone, I don't know, let's say Nafe Smalls, for yeah, example. Yeah. Like let's say that I, I'd be running through melodies, like guitar melodies. Okay. I'd be like, because obviously, I don't play guitar, so like yeah. I'm not. I can make VST guitar, but it doesn't sound as good. So I've got my guys like crazy German loop makers or something, and they've all yeah. sent me loads of guitar stuff. I'll run through the guitar melodies and say which one do you like? Because once I've got the melody, the rapper likes the melody. Yeah. It's cool. You can't really do much wrong after oh, that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. then after that, make the perks, the drums, the bass, everything else, and then yeah. it comes to the structuring, which is very important as well. Like hook, chorus, what are we doing here? Where am I chopping the beat up? Where are we creating the yeah. moments of energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah. Looking at the scene now. Mm. Um, Obviously, not so much what is so out there and popping. Are there gaps and little and I don't want to say little genres, but genres you think are creeping up and making fuse like you know nowadays people are trying a lot of infusions. Mm. You've got R and drill. There are other parts of drills that don't really get uh, too far even, out. There, even R and I mean? drill, like, I feel like that's not even being explored, explored properly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, been a couple real. artists, but like I feel like R and drill could be a crazy big genre. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's so much potential there. Even like um, as, as I can't remember his name, it's some Canadian guy. And he raps on drill beats at 120 BPM. It sounds yeah, mad, yeah. but it's hard, but like, it's crazy. Um, even house drill, I've spoken about that. There's like sort of the pain, the sad drill, like yeah, emotional yeah, yeah. drill. There's like, obviously you've got, obviously the club drill, that's always going to be there. Like club drill and like the club environment, yeah, that's yeah. what drill like is for, it's, I think. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's the main drill. Like you go to a club and you hear like a hard hitting drill beat. You're getting gas, you know. You're you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're spraying bottles. You're whatever you're doing. You know what I mean? You're you're, you're excited, you know. But um, yeah. It's obviously, fusion R and B drill. You got like soul drill. Like just, I think drill is such a wide genre. It can be everything, you know. Yeah. Like it's 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 evolving every day. Have you got a story that sticks out? Like I don't know. You've woke up in the. You've woke up. I don't know. Hungover. You didn't even know what day it was, and all of a sudden you've got a phone call and. This is the, you know, what story? Yeah, do you I feel like the one I was most shocked, most shocked about, I've got two, but the one that I was, I was out with my mates one evening, just like, posted on YouTube that day, I've done all my work for the day, I was like, right, I'm going to go out to the pub with the lads, it was yeah, the summer, yeah. I was like, right, I'm going to the pub, we're going to the pub, we'll go to the pub, so I went to the pub, I went to the pub, um, had, you know, I was drinking a couple of pints, you know, a couple of pints here and there, I was a bit, 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 uh, had a few too many, yeah. I just get a DM or a quest, checking through, most of that DM me, I was like, most stack what's, what's oh, going on okay. here i was like how, how the why, why the hell is he reaching out to me <laughs> i was very very confused and he's like yo i was like yo bro and my mate is a massive fan of most stack and i was like yeah i know it's mad and then um, he's like oh you want to beat some youtube i was like really and he chose a beat which is on his album yeah. um, track 13 i believe um and it was a, it was a bagpipe jewel beat yeah, i was like yeah, yeah. that beat i was like really but yeah, you know case, it was man. it was mad so yeah that was one i was shocked about and the next morning, like I was, I think I was drunk. I was chatting to most deck. I was just, I don't know, just saying really strange stuff. Like just, whoa, like bagpipe beat. Why this one? I was asking bare questions. Like I should have just been quiet. I'm like, cool, bro. Like, okay. I was like, I, was, <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. But I woke up the next morning. I was like, wow, that was that's mad. Okay, so briefly, just to like run me through your music creation process. Cool. So obviously, I just use my laptop. Literally, like most producers nowadays, you know, it's digital age. Laptop. Occasionally a keyboard, if you actually create, you know, run some chords down, whatever. 
yeah, I like to do it in my bedroom mainly, but sometimes I like to go to cafes and stuff, different environments, train stations, like on the train, just try new things out. Um, but yeah, recently I've been experimenting with the, with the circuit rhythm. That was cool, like it was more hands-on experience. So it was cool to try something new, like it's not what I'm used to, but nice to experiment with something different that I'm not normally used to. I already got to get into the music a bit more, so now nah, it was good. Bow, that was Behind The Hits with Mixtape Madness, and I've just chopped it up with Jester Beats. I hope you lot like that. Until next time.